In the previous lesson, we talked a lot about analyzing sequential circuits. We, we would be given a circuit that involved flip-flops, and, and we would need to determine what it is that that circuit did. Now, that's a very interesting task. It's certainly a, a rewarding task and a valid task for an engineer, but most engineers would say that the most rewarding task is design, the creation of something new. And so today we're going to talk about how we can design a sequential digital circuit. We'll talk about how we can go from a specification all the way through to a, to a circuit diagram that would implement that specification. So here is a, 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 a generic sketch, a sort of a very high level sketch of what a sequential digital logic device might look like. In this case, we have um, the present state is being stored in flip-flops. Uh, I've, I've indicated this one at least inher implicitly as having three flip-flops. So this is a three-bit uh, uh, present state uh, being stored as Q sub C, Q sub B, and Q sub A. Those outputs from the present state are being delivered as the inputs to the next state decoder. So, so the job of the next state decoder is to say, I see where I am now. Where do I want to go next? I see what the current state is, the present state. What needs to be the, what needs to be the, the inputs, J sub C, K sub C, J sub B, K sub B, J sub A, and K sub A, that will cause the, the device to transition into the correct next state. So you can see that this one is going to have three inputs, Q sub C, Q sub B, and Q sub A, and it's going to generate six outputs. Those six outputs then are fed back in to, uh, to, the, to the present state, and the next time that it receives an active clock edge, it's going to use those, those, uh, those next state inputs to transition correctly into the, into the correct next state. Now, one of the ways that we can that we can represent uh, a, a sequential device is in a state uh, state diagram. And here we can see a state diagram that that is simply each state is in a circle, and the transitions between the states are indicated with arrows. So we're going to transition from state zero zero to state zero one to state one zero to state one one. Now, the fact that each one of these uh, states is is stored in two bits means that we would need two flip flops to implement this particular design. Uh, you can see that if we have two uh, bits, uh, a two-bit number can, can at most have four different combinations. We've chosen to put those four different combinations in sort of the traditional binary counter order here. So in a way, this is sort of the most fundamental or the, the sort of the most basic of, of all of the sequential devices. Uh, that is the, just the simple modulus, uh, in this case, four binary counter. So we're going to count from zero up to three and then zero up to three and then zero up to three. Now we could describe that in words. We could simply call it a modulus four binary up counter, uh, or we could describe it using a state diagram, or we could describe it using a table. And so here we, can, we have a table where each present state indicates uh, the next state that would correspond. So zero would go to one. One is gonna go to two. Two is gonna go to three. Three is gonna go back down to zero again. And so these are, the, these are the three ways in which we can represent uh, a, a sequential device. We can either specify it in words or in a state diagram or in sort of a table that represents the next state. So I'd like you to give a, a shot at specifying your own sequential digital device. Uh, this will give you the opportunity to draw a state diagram and to go ahead and, and do it with a table if you'd prefer. Uh, when you're done with that, come back and we'll talk about how we can actually build these devices.